I've been separated from my group. Uh, it's been a couple of hours now, I think. I'm not sure. I was trying to find my way out and I can't. But I, I'm gonna stay here. I don't think that I went too far. Uh, oh, I, I'm not sure that I don't know the name of the cave. Uh, it, uh, the last, the, uh, our, our last entry point was somewhere near Tulum, Tulum, Guantanamo, Room, Mexico. If someone can notify the police uh, or the authorities or someone can help, uh, I'm gonna stay here. I have water and some food. I'm gonna stay here. Hello friends, Steve Stockton here with you. Now for some, a walk in the wilderness can be the perfect getaway from everyday life and a chance to reconnect with Mother Nature. For others, the great outdoors can be a dangerous place, and unfortunately, is a place where many people meet their end or just mysteriously vanish. Here are cases for you to consider. Randy Rasco. On November 19th, 2015, park rangers at the Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky noticed that a car had been sitting in the car park for around two weeks. This immediately set off warning bells, and after doing some digging for information, they discovered that the car belonged to 40-year-old Randy Rasco. As the car had been there for quite some time, the park ranger set about searching for Randy right away. But when he couldn't be found in or near the parking area, they opened an investigation and widened their search. Park rangers and investigators contacted Randy's family to see if they had spoken to him, but chillingly, they had been out of contact for a few months. According to his sister, Sherry, up until May 2015, everything was normal. On a regular basis, he was doing his normal things, hunting, fishing, and kept in contact with our brother who lived close to his Bowling Green apartment. Then one day out of the blue, he packed up his belongings, quit his job, and had his mail forwarded to another address, and just left. Sherry said they filed a missing persons report after they found out he had just fled and were worried as he had recently gotten divorced. For a month, the Rasco family waited for any news, and in June, he was found safe and sound in Washington State. Randy made it clear that he didn't want to speak to his family at that time and wanted to be alone. As painful as it was, his family respected his boundaries and assured him they would welcome him back with open arms whenever he was ready. For the next few months, it's believed that Randy traveled all around the U.S., all while maintaining his privacy and secrecy. His family didn't know that anything was wrong until the Mammoth Cave National Park Rangers contacted them to let them know that his car had been found abandoned. With this second disappearance, his family hoped that there would be a positive resolution. But sadly, Randy Rasco is still missing. Search crews, volunteers, and even the Civil Air Patrol all joined in on the search for Randy, scouring the over 53,000 acres of land in the park. Despite their best efforts and multiple searches, no sign of Randy has ever been found, and his car is the only clue we have in terms of his mysterious disappearance. Randy Rasco is described as a white male, six foot two inches tall, with black hair, hazel eyes, and a slim, athletic build. Anyone with any information is asked to please contact the Mammoth Cave National Park at 270-758-2180. Catherine Van Alst Eight-year-old Catherine Van Alst disappeared from Devil's Den State Park near Arkansas's Ozark National Forest when she and her family were camping. Catherine apparently was playing with her brothers when she wandered off and got lost. What makes Catherine's disappearance remarkable is she was found six days later. When found, she was wandering the woods and was eerily calm. University of Arkansas student Porter Chadwick was part of the search party that found Catherine. He told the Pittsburgh Press that when he found her, she walked stoically out of a cave and just said, Here I am. Many other hikers have gotten lost in that part of the Ozarks and haven't been as lucky as Catherine. A grown woman was lost there for 17 days and died just 50 yards from the road. How did Catherine survive in the woods for six days? Did someone take her, only to return her six days later? Or is there an explanation of this story that we simply can't comprehend? 
Either way, someone or something might just be lurking in Devil's Den. Kenny Veach 47-year-old Kenny Veach mysteriously disappeared in the Mojave Desert in Nevada on November 14, 2014. Kenny was hiking near Area 51 and was looking for cave systems and mine shafts. Kenny has uploaded several videos to his YouTube channel under the username SnakeBitMcGee, where he describes entering a cave with an M-shaped opening. He wrote in one comment, That ain't nothing. I'm a long-distance hiker. One time during one of my hikes out by Nellis Air Force Base, I found a hidden cave. The entrance to the cave was shaped like a perfect capital M. I always enter every cave I find, but as I began to enter this particular cave, my whole body began to vibrate. Suddenly, I became very scared and hightailed it out of there. That was one of the strangest things that ever happened to me. Now these videos gained popularity following his mysterious disappearance, and in these videos, he does indeed talk about how his whole body vibrated and he felt scared upon entering this mysterious M cave. Armed with a gun and a camera this time, Kenny headed back out to the M cave on November 10th, 2014, hoping to get a better look inside. However, Kenny never returned home. Although he was a very experienced hiker and outdoorsman, Kenny rarely took a map or GPS device with him on his hikes. According to his family, on the day of his disappearance, he told them that he would only be gone for a short overnight trip, but then when he didn't return home, they immediately called the police. Police, volunteers, and search and rescue teams all scoured the area where Kenny was last known to have been, and on November 22, 2014, volunteers found Kenny's phone. According to those volunteers, the trail went cold soon after they located his phone, and there have been no signs of Kenny ever since. At the time of this episode, the mysterious disappearance of Kenny Veach is very much alive in true crime and paranormal circles, but it appears that we are still no closer to uncovering the truth. Devil's Hole and the Tragic Disappearance of Two Teens in 1965 Now, there's just something about a place with the name Devil in its title that piques the curiosity of some people. There are countless locations all over the world which have this particular word in their name. Not only devil either, there are many other words that symbolize or mean devil or evil or some other form of something not very good or beautiful, given, somewhat ironically, to some of the world's most breathtaking and wondrous places. Sometimes the location will have gotten its name innocently enough, such as because the geology of the place simply looks foreboding and sinister, especially under the cover of night. Much of the time, these particular places are said to be cursed, enchanted, or downright evil, and the spooky and scary landscape only lends credence to these rumors and legends. So much of the time, though, these places with this particular word in the title are associated with not just devils, demons, spirits, and other otherworldly phenomena, but with real tragedies, disappearances, deaths, Maybe bizarre sounds and strange lights in the sky. Today, though, we're going to focus on one place in particular, where a mysterious tragedy struck. Devil's Hole, which is located in the aptly named Death Valley National Park in California, United States. This portion of the Mojave Desert, contained in Death Valley National Park, is the driest and hottest place in the United States. Near Badwater, in the long trench of the desert between the Panamint Range on the west and the Black Mountains on the east is the lowest dry land in the western hemisphere. An amazing 282 feet below sea level. A veritable showcase of desert extremes, Death Valley National Park includes one of the largest salt pans on Earth. Dramatically faulted landscapes, young volcanic craters, and massive dune fields. Today, we're going all the way back to the year 1965. Death Valley was very different from the Los Angeles of the time, where there were uprisings happening all over the place and all of it being shown live on the evening news. Death Valley, California, was in one of the least populated parts of the state at the time, and a whole different world than the more largely inhabited cities which surrounded it. On June 20th, 1965, Four high school buddies set out to a remote desert location about 90 miles northwest of Las Vegas. 
Their intent was to joy dive into a deep geothermal abyss called Devil's Hole. Sadly, two of the young men would never reemerge from this mysterious fossil water portal. Arriving at their destination, the foursome hiked up a hot, barren hillside, which overlooked a large-scale ranching operation that would nearly erase a much smaller and nearly ancient complex called Ash Meadows within a few short years. A well-trampled trail led to the entrance of a limestone chasm that had allegedly opened a whopping 60,000 years ago after possibly some seismic event caused the roof of the cave to collapse in on itself. The foursome of boys, which was made up of Paul Giancontari, a 19-year-old cafeteria worker at the nearby Nevada test site, his new brother-in-law, 20-year-old David Rose, who was a Las Vegas casino parking attendant, were with their other friend, 19-year-old Bill Alter, and his younger brother Jack. Boys scrambled under a fenced enclosure posted with warning signs, and thinking they were immune to any trouble these warning signs might be posted about, they proceeded to descend the 30 or so feet down to a ledge, where the faint but flitting movement of tiny blue-gray pupfish could be observed swimming in the 8 by 60 foot pool. That is, if any of the four young men had bothered to look just a bit closer at what they were about to jump into. After suiting up with scuba tanks, masks, and dive lights, Paul, David, and Bill dove into the claustrophobic waters. The temperature was nearly indistinguishable from that of their skin. Upon entering the pool, the boys most likely disturbed the delicate algae spawning mats where the entire population of the exceedingly rare Cyprinodon diabolus continues to prosper and breed exclusively. Jack was the only one who hadn't jumped in, as he was delegated the one who would remain stationed on the ledge in case anything went wrong. Sometime after midnight, Paul failed to resurface, so David and Bill quickly redove into the waters in a vain attempt to locate their missing friend. Bill Alter frantically followed David Rose down to approximately 170 feet until David, too, disappeared into the darkness. The bodies of the brothers-in-law were never recovered. Many people believed back then, and still do believe, that these young men were inspired to go diving at night despite the dangers in this specific place because of a newspaper article from the year before which detailed a speleological research expedition of a massive underground lake below Death Valley led by California-based professional diver Jim Houts, who would ironically dive numerous times around the clock with military personnel and other volunteer divers in their attempt to locate the missing men for 36 whole hours until the search was eventually called off. The only traces left of the two brother-in-laws? A mask and a snorkel. There was also a flashlight tied to a ledge some hundred feet below. It seemed to signal, ineffectively, the way out of the otherworldly underwater cave system. Articles detailing the unsuccessful rescue effort were published nationwide. In the Sarasota Journal, dated June 22, 1965, Houts stated that he had previously dived in Devil's Hole around 300 times over 28 trips, further commenting, It's beautiful in there. It goes straight down 160 feet, like a pipe, then opens into a room that is about 300 feet long and maybe 40 feet wide. The bottom of the room is about 260 feet down, then it narrows into another tube. I dive to 315 feet, maybe that's a record, I don't know, but at the end of the tube it opens again into something else. We don't know what the next room is, or if it's a room at all. It's like infinity. There are some very terrifying legends from the native tribes of the area about this particular place called Devil's Hole. The Timbasha told tales of water babies who would surface and swallow a swimmer or diver whole should they stay in the pool for too long. Other legends suggested that So Apitzi, a legendary malevolent giant who dwelled at mountain springs and caves, would snatch and devour unwary victims. Myths was standing, Barbara Durham, an elder of the Timbisha Shoshone, who shared these stories at a 2002 workshop, admitted that she and her friends enjoyed how the pupfish tickled their toes when they played in the spring. Keep in mind here that the Devil's Hole pupfish, as they are specifically named, are considered by experts to be the rarest fish found anywhere on the planet. 
they were even the first ever species to be classified as endangered. The fish are not important to the story at all, really, but it seemed worth mentioning in order to reinforce how very special and perhaps a bit magical this place actually is. As far as the two young men who disappeared without a trace back in this mystical and extremely dangerous underwater cave system decades ago, well, they've never been found, and neither have any clues relating to what could have possibly happened to them. As for one more bit of interesting fact that could lend a bit of credence to something a bit more sinister being afoot, as the local tribes absolutely believe, at this otherwise serene and tranquil looking water source, it's said that Charles Manson himself spent several days at Devil's Hole, trying to figure out a way to make it safely down into the chasm, with some saying he was convinced he would never have to come back up. Allegedly, he had an obsession with the place, and was convinced that there was an underwater portal to an alternate dimension, or more specifically, a portal to the underworld, where he felt he and his family would be able to safely wait out the coming apocalypse he so famously predicted would happen that never actually did. Charles Manson's problem lie in figuring out a way to drain the hole, and it seemed like he may have been given this idea by an alleged Indian legend that resurfaced during the 1920s, contending that a subterranean sect of leather-clad humanoids lived down within an eerily yellow-green lit abode somewhere in the Mojave Desert. Could this possibly be true, just as with the case of these poor young men just doing what young men do and looking for a night of perhaps irresponsible but never thought to be deadly fun, we may never actually know. So if you do visit Death Valley in the Mojave Desert just outside Las Vegas, don't venture in to Devil's Hole. I look forward to your comments on this one, but please keep it friendly and respectful. Meanwhile, be good to yourselves and each other, and I'll see you just a little farther on down the trail. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time.